Hello and welcome to Canary Live this Tuesday and it is May 20th. Is it your birthday today? If it is, many happy returns from the Canary Live team. Will you share it with three very famous people? The first is Shia. She is 68 years old today and she is still touring. Apart from being a fantastic performer, she's also a wonderful actress. And if you've never seen the movie Mask, then I encourage you to. It is a fantastic movie and you'll need a box of tissue. It's a real tearjerker. Cindy Crawford, can you remember her? Supermodel, Sports Illustrated, gorgeous. She was actually a, a love of Richard Gere for quite a while, but she is 48. And I tell you what, she ages beautifully. And last but not least, Joe Cocker, the rocker, he's 70 years old today and he is still touring as well. And uh, a little story to share with you, he was staying at the Christchurch Park Crew a few years ago uh, and uh, a lot of the stars then used to have their laundry taken off site just in case anyone obviously picked up little bits and bobs and so forth and uh, he was taking his laundry outside the hotel and uh, dropped his undies on the marble. How's that? So um, anyway, one of the boys quickly picked them up and gave them back to him. But there you go. Today's show is very special because we're talking about a playground. Playground, we see them all throughout New Zealand, but there is something special happening within our CBD. And I have the great pleasure of welcoming Don Miskell from the CCDU Christchurch Central Development Unit. Welcome, Don. Great to be here. What an amazing role that you have, and how fantastic to be involved in such a wonderful, wonderful venture. Look at this, I think I've got a dream job, really. <laughs> shaping the new city and a key part of this new shape of the city is a playground for all ages and all abilities in a very, very central and accessible place. Let's take it back to the start and how it was actually conceived, the idea. Well, it was actually during the blueprint, you know that 100 day mm. blueprint that we were, that I was in a team working on and we've, we were really conscious that the city centre had a cordon around it and there were many children who were born and growing up who probably didn't even know we had a central city. So we felt it was important that very early on in the regeneration of the heart of the city that we actually developed a playground and actually gave a reason for young people to come into the city in particular. But we also felt it should be a family playground and bring your grandparents and bring your parents and bring your brothers and sisters and cousins. And why call it the Amazing Places competition? Well, we had this idea of let's ask the, the children of our city, or actually the region, to put their imaginative thinking caps on and come up with the greatest playground in the world. And so we, we invited schools from across Canterbury to take part, and there were preschools right, up and, um, right through to the uh, upper primary school level. And they formed teams and let their imaginations go. They built models, drew plans, and it, we were really overcome with, uh, it exceeded our expectations. And let's talk about the entries. How many entries did you have? Uh, we had 300, uh, 600 entries, mm -hmm. 300 entries, I beg your pardon, mm -hmm. uh, from about 7,000 children. So they, they formed teams and they had to interact with each other, do planning, drawing, model making. And I know that the teachers actually used the, 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 the competition idea to, into the curriculum and a whole range of uh, activities. Part of the syllabus. Um, tell us about some of the entries that were the highlights for you and the team. Well, I, the, the grand winner actually decided to call it the Margaret Mahi Amazing Place. And, and it really was. It was amazing. These young women came up with a... Um, a Margaret Mahi inspired playground, you know, and, and I think that was um, really caught our imagination. And, and then uh, we approached uh, Margaret Mahi's family uh, and got their approval to name the, the playground after Margaret Mahi, which all young children mm. and, you know, growing up in New Zealand know. Yeah, a wonderful lady, and we're fortunate at CTV we actually spent time with uh, Margaret Mayhe before she passed, so that's fantastic. Well, tell us about the playground specifically, though. Well, it's, it's, it's quite large, and it's right beside the river. It's up, it's between Madras Street and Manchester Street, right up beside the river, 
and it is going to have um, a whole range of play for all ages. There'll be water play, there'll be, you know, kids will be able to build uh, dams, you know, with water coming through, four metre wide slides that, you know, you can go down with your friends, flying foxes that you can race, you know, the, uh, uh, parallel flying foxes. Uh, basketball courts and in fact there will be some play equipment that you've never ever seen in New Zealand because we actually want this not to be just a neighbourhood playground where the, you might just walk down the road mm. from your house we actually want people to come on the bus, come on a bike or drive in to actually visit this playground so we want it as a regional resource. Fantastic. Thanks, Don. Well, you can't get a better promo than uh, that teaser. And throughout the show today, we will be showing you parts of the Amazing Places competition. So stay with us. After the break, we check out the initial stages. Be watching CTV News first at five and you could win up to $5,000 every week with CTV's cash giveaways. For more information, visit our website and be watching CTV News first at five. Hi, I'm Steve and welcome to Carpet Kingdom. At Carpet Kingdom, we stock a massive range of carpets and we're also the largest vinyl stockers in the South Island. And not only do we have an excellent range in store, but you can purchase our stock online. We offer free measuring quotes we have our own installation team. We ship nationwide, so come on down and see us at Carpet Kingdom. 312 Wilson's Road in Waltham, just off Brougham Street, or visit us online at carpetkingdom.co.nz. The Hearst Auto Dismantlers premises has been sold. We apologise for any inconvenience. Ready to go, mate? Flight leaves at 4.30. Relax, mate. We'll park at Airpark Canterbury. Airpark Canterbury, privately owned and operated with a free 24-7 shuttle service. Call 0800 Airpark or book online at airparkcanterbury.co.nz. Come dine with Country Catering at the Kaipui Golf Club Cafe. Enjoy our range of delicious $10 lunches, daily specials and other homemade goodies. Open to the public seven days inside the Kaipui Golf Club. North end of William Street, Kaipui. We look forward to seeing you soon. The Home Show sale is on. Hi, Mike from Four Seasons. We have the largest range of gas and wood burners on display. All wood burners and gas fires are heavily reduced. Save up to $1,300 on fire and flu packages. The Home Show sale at Four Seasons Home and Leisure, Tower Junction Mega Centre. Come on down to Fairy Mead Golf. Care for a game of paintball? How about some swings on the old driving range? Or on our par three, nine hole golf course? Test your skills on the mini golf course or have a go at the air gun shooting range. Then relax at the Wow Cafe with one of our super succulent Wow Burgers. Whether you want to perfect your swing or are looking for a fun family day out, come down to Ferrymead Golf, 50 Ferrymead Park Drive, right next to the Ferrymead Heritage Park. Tomorrow Today is your science program, presenting a comprehensive overview of the latest trends in science and research. Tomorrow Today, Tuesday night at 7.30pm, right here on CTV. Welcome back to Canterbury Live. Well, now we tease you with the initial stages of the Amazing Places competition. Playgrounds. This is our playground and we decided to build it out of Lego as you can see. And we made some models that can move, like this and this. I painted the road. I put the stones in the hill and there's a flying fox. It's very long. The challenge we had was how do we engage the children of Christchurch and Canterbury with the central city. You've got to remember that after the earthquake there was a cordon around the central city for what, over 800 days. Basically the, the message is getting out to the children and their families was don't come in here and we wanted to bring them back in. 
The idea is to have a huge, wonderful playground that facilitates all sorts of play for different ages, for diverse users, for all types of kids through to, to grandmas like myself. First thing that we knew about it was when the bright yellow box turned up at our school and one of our other teachers said, how about this for a, for a, a unit or an inquiry unit? And we had a group of girls that have taken that on and are running with it at the moment. So they are in the middle of designing an amazing place for Christchurch. Quite intimidating getting the brick at first, but we had a look through it and decided it was something that we could definitely do. It was just super exciting for them. I think it's a fun idea, get children interactive with designing and building Christchurch, because Christchurch needs to be better and stronger. It's really important that children have a voice so that they feel that they're connected to their city, that they have a reason to come back into the city. The children have a, uh, a really great imagination and if you're talking about playgrounds, what better audience can you ask than children? Uh, we should decide this would be quite a cool idea because uh, we have uh, all the playgrounds that I've been to, we haven't really seen any climbing walls like this before, so we thought it would be a nice new way to, you know, brighten up Christchurch and get it running again. Looking at our city, we talked about playgrounds and what we really liked and thought, well, here's an opportunity to create the best playground in the world. Let's just dream big. What would be a really cool thing to do? It's called Wonderland. Um, it's quite a simple playground. We have a scooter track here. We haven't finished yet. My favourite part would be the dragon wearing sunglasses. They had some pretty hard asks. They were told about the site, you know, in terms of the location, you know, the size of the site, the kinds of activities that could be there, but then they were left with their imagination. Hi, my name's Jackson and this is Rocket Land, a model that I have made. Basically what it is here is a slide, a seesaw and uh, what I call a rocking car, which is you put a penny in and it starts rocking back and forth automatically. And we have a swing set here, a cart track, and you get off the vehicle and have an experience in the rocket. We're on Fano class, so we're so in, uh, lots of these things of mouldy things, like different kinds of swings. I've got a hill and I've got some picnic tables, just in case you want to have a picnic lunch. I'll see you on the deck. Oh, that's silly. We can't fit on a duck. A goose? <laughs> a goose is a good one. That's big enough. I think it's just brilliant uh, to give children of Christchurch a voice, actually. I just think they've gone through so many upheavals over the last couple of years. And so for the initiative of them to be able to have just dream big um, in such a big piece of property. It's an amazing opportunity for them to create their future here as well. Playgrounds are fun and, <laughs> and people like playgrounds and there's not that many really cool ones here anymore. I mean, I'm from Christchurch, from Sumner. Um, everything seems to be about doom, gloom and rebuild and it's the holidays at the moment and I just see kids just doing nothing and I really feel for them and they seem to sort of been missed in this whole rebuild. There's all this talk of creating an amazing city um, and these guys here are going to be the ones that are going to be living in the city so yeah it's really important that they have a voice into it. They've been through some really horrible things and um, I feel like the Amazing Place competition has given them an opportunity to see the silver lining um, to kind of have a, to have a role in, in the what next and the um, reimagination of, of Christchurch and what it could be. We sort of figured that there, wouldn't, there wasn't many playgrounds or equipment that um, disabled could go on, so we constructed it so that they could go on it and have the time of their life. <laughs> so you climb up the stairs if you don't have special needs, or you climb up the escalator if you do has special needs and you land in the foot and you go through the big squish of tummy and then you go into the mouth and sit down on your bottom and go down the big squeaky slide and finish into the sandpit. To be able to broaden them past what they know has been a big challenge so that 
be thinking about what might be possible rather than just what has already been. They Google Earthed the actual plot of land and we put it up on the interactive whiteboard and they started drawing things onto the air, so, and then the creating and the planning. They've been writing letters to John Key, um, so there's just a wealth of amazing learning experiences that they've been involved in. The children have loved it from day one. They've loved having a project, going home, talking to their parents about it, finding what they could add, bringing resources into the centre to glue on it. They've loved it. Oopsies. Schools had to run an internal competition initially, uh, so they submitted their three best at each year level. Uh, we had over 300 entries, and based on that, we estimate over 6,000 kids took part in the competition. That tunnel, just as yeah. I designed that for the, it's a tunnel slide to your home. To your home. Um, we've had ideas like the slide going to children's houses and then back to the playground so they could get there faster. We've had children decide that they want to look at the new buildings and see Christchurch rise back up. We have had a great number of submissions, especially in the early childhood, that's the area I'm in at the moment, and uh, some real creative stuff from, from children as young as three, four, five. It just blows you away, actually. Um, looking at a lot of cool ideas. Some kids have put it down into poster, uh, some in models. Um, definitely a lot of cool ideas, a lot of stuff that can be used for a real playground. Um, Got to say, there's some stuff that I hadn't even thought of, so yeah, it's pretty cool. One of the things that's really interesting is that in designing playgrounds is that adults tend to, often they're a monument to self, you know, there's a lot of art, there's a lot of um, stuff that looks nice, which is really important, but there's no play. And with all of these designs, there's play, because that's what the kids want. Well, normally we get our brief from adults. The council employees, the council officers, are uh, their take on what they think the kids want. This time we're getting it from the kids back up, which is great. Um, one theme I'm seeing is these kids obviously design during summer and they're really missing their pools. QE2's gone, Centennial's gone, uh, water's a huge theme that's coming through. Well there is one playground where a, a man does get burned alive in a lava pool but you know, that's, <laughs> I guess you make your own choice if you want to get involved in that kind of ride but yeah, apart from that it's all been pretty cool <laughs> yeah. though. Yeah. yeah, there is a bit of doom and gloom in some of them. <laughs> yeah. I think if we leave it in the hands of the, the children, we're going to come up with some amazing things. It's just trying to pull out the trends from there, and uh, there are some amazingly quirky ideas that just you know, have the essence of something that could be pretty amazing. Everybody wants to win, but... <laughs> yeah. We're definitely going to win. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> we're so going to win. <laughs> Nothing like a child's giggle. Now after the break, we head out on location to find out who the winners are of The Amazing Places. The world has a great deal to tell. Journalists from across the world report on their home nations and the experiences of the people who live there. World Stories. Introducing my free view. This fella doesn't just preserve your right to watch free digital TV. It fits your viewing around your life. Too busy putting out fires? Record at the touch of a button. Want to watch one channel and record another? You can. And if you need to nip away, hit pause. Even a live show. For a one-off payment, you can enjoy free view when it suits you, not someone else. It's like having your own TV station at home without monthly fees or contracts. My free view. It's Kiwi for TV. Christchurch has its very own enchanted utopia. The Hitching Post, pop in and see for yourself. A magical assortment of handmade creations, custom made candles and artwork. Choose from our huge range of water features, garden art and imported giftware. Specialists in handcrafted metal artwork made in store. Nestled on 722 Marshlands Road. The Hitching Post, defining art our way. Come in and meet the locals at the Bush Inn Centre. Whether it's to grab a coffee on the go or to catch up with a friend over lunch or dinner, the Bush Inn Centre is the perfect place. With our unique range of shops, you'll find everything you're looking for and more. Our friendly locals are always happy to help. We have plenty of parking at the Bush Inn Centre, making your shopping experience just a little bit easier. So come in, meet the locals and shop Bush Inn. You'll find us on the corner of Rickerton and Waimari Roads. 
meet the latest arrivals at Berlin's two animal parks and find out what it takes to be a zoo baby in a modern zoo. Zoo Juniors. Wednesday nights at 8pm, right here on CTV. Welcome back to Canterbury Live. Before we head out to the prize giving, I'd like to thank you for joining us today on Canterbury Live. We'll see you tomorrow with the CDHB, but now we head to the prize giving. Welcome to the Amazing Place competition. It's amazing! <laughs> welcome, welcome. What an important day this is because you've had a big say in creating one of the exciting projects that we're able to bring you as we rebuild and recreate our city. An amazing place and that is what today is all about. Do you know what? The modern playground is so different to the one I used to go on. So we used to have those things that spin around a bit in case you feel a bit giddy when you came off those. And we had the slides and we had the swings. We didn't have anything like rockets and all the things that we're seeing designed here. So your playground is going to be fantastic. So well done for all of you being in the competition. Right, so our first Early Childhood Education Services Prize. We have very highly commended Oxford Play Centre. Awesome guys, and then for year six in first place, we have Harriet Compton, Moen, Sal Logan, Enya O'Malley, and Lucy Jessup from Selwyn House. Well done, guys. Now, tell us about your playground. Um, it's a Margaret Mahe Memorial Playground based on Margaret Mahe's books. Did you girls enjoy creating it? Yes. So, it was just the three of you? Wow. Lucy Jessup, but she's moved to England. Ah. Oh. <laughs> now, thank you so much, girls, but that is not all. The judges were so impressed by your entry, they decided it deserved a special award. And I'd like to ask Margaret Mahi's daughter, Penny Mahi, to join us on stage and present a special prize to each of the girls. So I've got a very special announcement to make now, and that is I'm delighted to announce that the playground that has been designed is going to be named after Margaret Mahi, and just as Margaret Mahi's books captured the imagination of generations of New Zealanders, this playground will be a place for people of all ages to enjoy. The, the main winners were brought into a workshop and their ideas were put on the table and then actually put in a comparison against what our lead designers had actually put together. And there was a collaborative discussion between their ideas and how they would actually be implemented on the site. We basically asked them to talk about their ideas, their winning entries, but we found it like a, a sort of educational process for them to explain the sort of design work and the approach that we now have to do to make their playground come to life and become an actual project on the ground. So why did you put it in that location? Because um, it's a shady, shady location. But you can dance. Right. Okay. So it's in both the shade and the sun. Yeah. And then that's we very good thing about So actually that's a good point. Maybe the cafe. It could be. It could be. They've got their ideas, but they've been working out what scale it needs to fit on the site and where it goes. So I think that was a really good exercise for them to really, their imagination to actually start to take form on, on the ground. In the meantime, we still have 30 metre high castles and, um, and, and the likes, which, are, which will be a, a challenge to, to interpret and implement. But yeah, we certainly take advantage of uh, the degree of naivety, if you like. No idea is a bad idea. Uh, and yeah, often very good places to start. It just came to me and I just went, we should do a Margaret Mayhew playground. And from there we kind of just built on that. We each found one book that we really liked and we designed one piece of playground equipment ourselves. Um, 
this is the castle based on Madigan's Fantasia. This is the Elsie Lock Memorial Family Picnic Area. This is the Dragon's Tongue Slide. The sense of magic and imagination that she brought to life in those stories, and they've really grasped hold of that as the opportunity to create this fantastic play experience. So I think that's what's driving our design as well, is to create this fantastic setting to let the children's imagination really run riot and have such a diverse, a diverse arrangement of different play elements and stories that they can come to enjoy. My idea was the tree lookout, which is would be around this area. It's like basically a giant tree that's hollowed out in the middle. And it has like a big like aluminium slide that goes down, but we've put it in the shade so it doesn't get really hot. We've got the witch hat slide, which was based on the witch in the cherry tree. And it's a massive big witch hat, complete with a pink bow. The swings are broomsticks because in the story the witch has a broomstick and she flies away on it once she has her muffin. And so what have you learned today? I think we learned that actually it's a way bigger space than we thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> Those children who were involved in the very beginning, if they can participate to the end and can see which of their ideas survive and which not and why, then they will make this place their place and they will care for it and, and play there and they will tell everybody, look, I was involved here. It's the same system that has that connectivity I see. Um, through from the water play. I haven't come across a briefing that was so well prepared so far in my uh, professional career, I must say. And our team here are five professionals coming from uh, four different companies, all bringing their background. So this is a, a superb combination, really. So we're expecting to see back from them some quite subtle but meaningful design responses in the play equipment that reference some of Margaret Mayhew's stories, um, Elsie Locke and her stories, and the iwi traditional games in particular. Of the precinct in the Avon River precinct, it is really the centre of the precinct, and it really is about connecting all the spaces around it. It's about providing the existing community with a wonderful space, a new residential community that we're promoting with this great space, as well as the broader parts of Christchurch and Canterbury. The project team are working really hard to deliver this playground by December this year. So it's ready for the summer holidays and can be a key part of bringing people back into the city centre.